All right, so hopefully you've had a chance to watch From the that. lot. I'm going to click out of that, sorry. Um, so there's a few things I want to mention here, um, and, th and this is why the Great Train Robbery is so important. First off, this is within the first decade of film really being a thing. So there's a lot of things that are going on here. It does use parallel action. Um, you'll notice that there's a scene in there where the robbers have robbed and gotten away. And then it cuts back to the station and it shows the man hogtied and a little girl comes in and helps wake him up and well helps wake him up and also untie him as well. So all of that's going on and, it, and then it cuts back to the robbers and also calls to the law enforcement and stuff like that. So we kind of know all these things are happening at the same time. So it uses parallel action as well. And a lot of parallel action sequences today are shown for heightening effect, pursuer versus pursued, simply to heighten t t tension. You see this in um, in superhero movies a lot too. They'll cut back and forth, or you know, the big scene is coming up and it's just building up time and all that. The other big thing, well, there's two other big things about this film. So first, it does use parallel action. Second, it's the first film to really use the pan and the tilt of the camera. Up until this point, movies did static long shots. And a long shot means you can see the entire body of the actor. Like right now, this would probably be argued a medium shot, more like a close-up almost, of just if you're looking at just my video. But a uh, pan and a tilt, but okay, so a long shot, we'll talk about this in the next unit, but it's where you see the entire body of the actor. A medium shot, you see like, you know, waist up or something, or chest up, that type of thing. Static shot means it does not move. The camera does not move. The action moves, but the camera itself does not move. Because the, act the actors can move, the camera can move, they can both move, neither can move. In this case, we typically see, the, um, so pan is when the camera goes back and forth and tilt is when it goes up and down. So just to kind of, and again, I took these animations from Crash Course because they're very good animations and I wanted to put those in here for you as well. But up until this point, films didn't pan they didn't tilt they didn't move the camera and it's very interesting to note that one of the scenes that they pan is when the robbers um, they're crossing over like a little creek they're crossing over a creek and the camera pans and when it pans it reveals horses and we didn't see the horses before that scene but the pan the camera never leaves the robbers it follows the robbers as they go across the creek but then we see horses and we, now we know that oh, this is where they're going this is what they're trying to get to this is their means of escape and so we see that and that was a very shocking that was kind of shocking too it was also a, it's a storytelling element and we know this all the time we see this in movies all the time where they pan over or they or you see the actors and they have a you know look of surprise on them and then the camera turns and shows you what it is that they're looking at you see things like that all the time the other thing is the final scene of the of the show and that's why i didn't want to talk too much about it before you watched it because i don't want to tell you ahead of time and then you see it and if you have at this point well spoilers the very final scene is a close-up and at this point in time close-ups were not done you see you know that you see a robber from about you know stomach up and he sits there and he looks at the screen and he points a gun right at the screen and he fires the gun supposedly this was enormously shocking to the audiences at the time supposedly people ducked people sh sh shrieked people screamed people you know thought that they were going to be shot because again movies were very very novel at this point and so <clears throat> excuse me and so being able to do that was so it was a close-up shot and just a very surprising thing that almost made you the audience part of the movie too all of these things come together to make this a very shocking scene there's the if you watch the beginning of any james bond movie you know normally it starts off with showing um a gun you're looking down a gun barrel and you see the agent walking by and the gun barrel follows him and then he turns and shoots at the gunman and the red goes and the gun falls and then they start with the big opening musical number and the credits roll as the film is opening up. You typically see that in most, if not all, James Bond movies. It's believed that this was an, that that scene at the end of Great Train Robbery was part of the influence for that particular scene. Also, the very end of Goodfellas has a scene in it where you see um, the one of the characters do the same thing, where they just point at the screen and they fire the gun over and over again. Very, very similar to um, what you see with the Great Train Robbery.
So it's just, it's a very monumental movie. It's a short movie. It's, it's a good little movie. It, it show it's only got so many, I think it's like 11 scenes was what I heard once. You know, it's only got like 11 shots, I meant, that make up the whole movie. You know, it's not very many. Um, I, can't, I may be wrong with that number. You, I go through so much research in this course for you that I forget where I read what and what I read. <laughs> Um, because I, I'm trying to pull things together from different sources. So, but it's, it's definitely worth watching. And again, i um, trying to show you some of these early movies so that you have bigger appreciation for some of the bigger things that we'll be looking at eventually.